Welcome back to This Is How I Science, a video series where we interview some of the science community's most brilliant and diverse minds. My name is Dr. Corey Grayson. I am a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Michigan, and this is How I Science. I'm kind of from everywhere but nowhere. I moved a lot as a child and still do as an adult. Um, but my mother was one of the first influences that I had that really got me into science. She would help me and my brother when we were in elementary school do our science fair projects, oftentimes at the last minute. But her willingness to help, her enthusiasm, and just her ingenuity unknowingly sparked something in me. So being a first-generation college student, I ended up attending Norfolk State University, which is an HBCU in Norfolk, Virginia, where I received my bachelor's in chemistry with a pre-medical emphasis. Recently, I received my PhD in biomedical engineering from Cornell University. What does it feel like to have a scientific hero such as your mother? And were there other people in your life that also inspired you, uh, being a, a woman of color, person of color, very much like me? Um, that inspired you to be where you are today. And I'd love to hear if, uh, if there were any obstacles that came along the way that they helped remove or that they were there for you for. My mother, you know, she doesn't have a college degree, but she is one of the smartest people that I know. My mother doesn't always know what I'm talking about. Well, maybe ha most of my family doesn't really know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They're always super supportive and even willing to listen to me. My mother has listened to me practice my talks and, you know, give me critiques. But just having her there just really like pushing me just helps me really kind of go in my science. And then overall, I was more inspired by my research within prostate cancer and colorectal cancer because that disproportionately affects the African-American population. And so mm -hmm. the basis and the motivation behind my research was because my grandfather was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And so he died about two years ago, but that was basically what was the passion and pushed me through in order to complete my thesis and my PhD. So that was a big kind of reason why I took on the work that I did and still do. And so the obstacles that I face, I mean, there are several. Sometimes I may be the only one. Sometimes being a woman, you know, you have biases and, you know, gender stereotypes. And even being a Black woman, you know, you also are unfortunately kind of stereotyped as angry or sassy and you kind of have to fight these stereotypes in order to be heard even though you're passionate as your same counterparts and so that sometimes was a little bit of an obstacle I would have to go through dealing with microaggressions either based on race or sex and kind of defeating and knocking down those stereotypes one by one and just showing that you know representation matters and so I think it's just very important for people, especially young women of color, people of color, to see scientists that look like them, you know, doing this research okay. and also being able to, to talk about it and also affect and have a good effect on their community. You said something very astute and it's so, it's so inspirational and lovely to speak with you because you said something where you said, you know, it's, it's important for scientists to see other scientists that look like them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because I think that the general stereotype is a scientist has a very sort of certain image. So mm -hmm. let's talk about image for a second, because I think it's important to understand that you're not defined by just being a scientist. You're a real human being, you know, that you happen to be a scientist, scientist in your work, which is the incredible work you're doing. But before that, you're a human being. So talk to me a little bit about what image means to you? Basically, my whole, I think, purpose is to show like this is what a scientist looks like and to redefine the image of STEM. I look different and I come from a different background and I have, you know, a different story. I remember my father telling me, you know, he was like, you aren't what I thought of when I thought of a scientist, but now you are. And so just having even that thought within the community and kind of changing our perceptions of ourselves and how we see each other in STEM. And so it's about representation. So even with, you know, this is what a scientist looks like. It's not about the actual physical image, but it's sometimes the unseen ones that we don't even know about the story, maybe even our, our 
disabilities that we can't see that isn't always talked about or represented in the STEM field. And so for me, it's just showing like, here I am, I'm Corey, I'm bringing my authentic self to the table and I am human. It's been a real joy to listen to you. And I'm sure that even from this short time, uh, a lot of young people will be inspired to follow in your footsteps. And I wish you continued success. And we're so glad that we're in this together and we won't stop till we get it done. So thanks, Doctor. Thank you so much for your time and look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thermo Fisher and I want to hear from you. We want to hear how you promote awareness, how you promote inclusion. We want to see your photos and your videos using the hashtag, this is how I science.